Hello from Belfast International Airport, where I'm asking the question, should I give up flying? I'm Patrick Hughes and this is Planet Patrick. I follow a lot of people online, perhaps like you do, who do flight reports or write travel blogs. And I'm seeing an increasing amount of them saying, should they give up flying? Should we all give up flying? There's a word in Swedish which kind of captures the way that some people are feeling about this. I think it's pronounced flygskam. Flight shame is the status of feeling guilty about taking flights. And I want to get under the skin of what that's about and the idea of giving up flying. So should we feel guilty? Should I feel guilty? It's a time to give up flying. I noticed that some travel writers were writing about the idea of taking a year off from flying and seeing how that affected their travel life. And it got me thinking about the impact of aviation on global warming. Look, my channel is mostly about flight reports as well as the occasional ferry or train report too. So I've got some skin in this game. If you're new here, I'm a digital nomad and I also travel full time. Without flying, my life would be a lot more static or at least a lot more local. Having said all that, I still think it's important to ask, what are the consequences of choosing to fly? Because I want at least to be conscious about my flying habits and deliberate about how I move forward. There's a lot of noise and a lot of advice out there from both pro-aviation enthusiasts and anti-aviation enthusiasts. From encouraging luxurious but high carbon jet usage to promoting a never fly again agenda. And the research seems to vary widely about the impact of aviation on the health of the planet. Can we get to some facts? I found an article by Clover et al that tries to quantify aviation's contribution to global warming. That team works with Oxford and Manchester University and the Rutherford Appleton Laboratory. So it's a good starting point and I'll link it below so you can make your own judgment. The headline for me is that aviation is responsible for about 4% of global warming. Within less than 30 years, by 2050, the aviation industry will, on its own, cause a 0.1 degree Celsius increase in global temperatures. On its own. So I guess the question is, what can we do about it? Some answers are, shut down the industry. Everybody stop flying. Feel shame for flying. Shame frequent flyers by your display of not flying. Fly more, buy a jet. Fly but use carbon offsets. Develop alternative aviation fuels. There's so many angles here from an academic perspective, political perspective, economic perspective, that it's impossible to encapsulate all of them in one short video. But one that resonates with me is the idea of aviation's global environmental footprint versus an individual's carbon footprint. On the global scale, it might make us feel helpless to be able to make a substantial difference. It feels like I can't make a difference on my own. If we think about the aviation industry in the context of a globalized and massively interconnected world, it's key to the movement of people and cargoes in a way that can enrich our everyday experience by delivering essential foods, medicines, as well as people traveling to work or to be with family, to be with you. Have no doubt, remaking the economics of the world to, for example, eradicate the airline industry for the benefit of global warming would be to reconstruct the world order. A stronger reading of climate change critical thinking might argue that global warming will go right ahead and cause the reconstruction of the world order anyway, and a lot else besides, through the destruction of the earth as we think we know it. On the other hand, what about our individual carbon footprint? There's a long list of actions that each person can take to decrease their demand on available resources. And of course, not flying is one of those. Perhaps one person not flying at all won't stop that flight from going. But if enough people change their habits, it will cause the patterns of flights and demand to evolve one way or the other. The Swedish notion of flygskam or flight shame kind of fits in here. On the one hand, it's about individuals feeling shame for flying so much and leveraging that shame to reduce their carbon footprint by not flying so much. In another way, it's about seeing that flight shame as a badge of honor. 
a way of impressing shame on other people by your example of flying less or by directly confronting others. In a wider sense than that, it's about flight shame as a social movement, about making frequent flying feel taboo, all in the service of the reduction of our carbon footprint. I have mixed feelings about that idea. I like the idea of motivating myself and others to reduce any harmful behaviours that we transact, but I don't like the idea of actively shaming other people to do that. And I don't buy into the idea of Fliegscam for myself. I think a movement that creates public awareness might be successful, and that must start by highlighting the case for personal responsibility. Look, I'm really no saint about this, and I'm not in a position to preach on this subject, particularly not as a flight reviewer. However, I do want us to have an ongoing discussion about this, whether flying or not flying matters, how it might cause the aviation industry to evolve, and how our own behaviours may or may not change. For example, 10 years ago, I used to commute every week from Ireland to the UK, and I'm sure that in those years, I did at least 100 flights a year. That's a big carbon footprint. I also owned a car. Although I now do flight reviews as part of my job, and I work full-time as a digital nomad, I fly much less frequently. I guess less than half of my old total. So I'm going to start to measure what I do. I take public transport a lot more. And in the past year, I've usually taken a train, mostly in Europe, even if a flight option exists, simply because I like taking trains. There's been an increase in accessibility to trains and ferries that go places that I need to go, and those are usually much more carbon efficient ways to travel. If, like me, you've marveled at the astonishing evolution of electric cars in the past 10 years or so, there must be enormous pressure on the aviation industry to evolve towards alternative fuels and other ways of cutting carbon emissions. Perhaps incentivizing the wider transportation industry by subsidizing low carbon forms of transport might point the nose of the aircraft in the right direction. Look, I could also make an entire video about carbon offsetting, an entire channel, and whether it works or not. Let's just conclude this part by acknowledging that people will still want to travel. I still want to travel, even if it's in a slightly more limited and thoughtful way. When we wake, hear the birds and see the sun. Side by side, our fears are done. Oh, the good times just begun. We know what we have, let's hold on tight Found what we're looking for in life Call I don't think we're quite there yet with quite how to manhandle or womanhandle the aviation industry into a new future in which it reduces its carbon footprint more dramatically. Nor can I make an argument based on shame or argue that people can't go and see their loved ones or argue for something more extreme like a village-based or locally-based economy or lifestyle for all of us in which no one travels except in the most limited of ways. However, I am fascinated to see how the flight chain community evolves and whether it starts to take on a slightly more positive collectivist view. Right now I can make a cohesive argument. That means I will reduce my own reliance on flights, particularly where an alternative exists. As a travel filmmaker and blogger, I'm not about to stop flying entirely at this point, nor am I going to start feeling ashamed. That's not really in my personality anyway. I don't think that rules out behaving responsibly and starting to make some changes to the kind of flying that I do. I think I can choose to take flights more consciously and be deliberate about which flights I choose to take. I think it's realistic to recognise that the aviation industry is essential to the world's economy as it's currently structured, for the transportation of goods and people. But we must work together to work out ways to reduce the environmental damage that that causes, while still meeting our needs. Where do you stand on the idea of flight shame? Have you stopped flying altogether or started to change your behaviour? Hit me up in the comments below. And look, let's start a bit of a conversation about this. You can find the transcript of this video over on planetpatrick.net, alongside lots of trip reports. Thanks very much for being here. Take care. Bye bye. I'm Patrick Hughes and this is Planet Patrick.